This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Tracking things into footage is one of the most instantly rewarding processes in After Effects, and it's really easy to do. First, you'll need a video clip to track, and I'm gonna head to Storyblocks to find a shot myself, which is convenient because Storyblocks is the sponsor of this video. So while I find a shot to track, let me tell you a little bit about them. Storyblocks is a massive royalty-free stock asset library, and having a Storyblocks subscription gives you instant access to all the assets you need to create projects quickly. Find everything you need to make your video stand out with Storyblocks library of over a million 4K and HD footage clips, templates, music, sound effects, images, and more. With unlimited downloads, you can easily test out different effects, clips, or tracks to enhance your videos and bring your creative vision to life. New content is added all the time and they keep on top of trending searches and keywords so you can know that you're always getting the freshest content for your projects. You can learn more about Storyblocks by clicking on the link down in the description. Thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Now I found this kind of drone racing shot over the beach. It's really dynamic, it's fast moving. I think it's gonna work out perfect for the 3D camera tracker and After Effects. I could download the 4K version, but I don't think I really need that much resolution. So I'll just stick with the HD version, click on download, and we'll get that into After Effects. And I'm gonna drag that video clip down to the new comp button so it makes the comp the same size and settings as that video clip. And here we have it ready to go. And now I just need to apply the 3D camera tracker effect. So I'll search for that. There's the effect. If you wanna know absolutely everything about this effect and what it all does, check out my Effects of After Effects video. You can click on the card above to go watch that. Now, before I apply the effect, I wanna talk about why I chose this shot. It's because there's really nothing going on in this shot. It's basically flat planes. It's a flat ground. Yes, there are waves moving, but there's not lots of big objects moving around the scene, obstructing the shot and making this more difficult to track. The reason that would make it more difficult to track is because After Effects is going to look at at basically all of these pixels that make up this video across time and analyze them from one frame to the next, trying to see how has this shot changed and how can I translate this into 3D camera data. If there are lots of things moving in front of the camera and wiping across other moving objects, After Effects is gonna get confused. It won't be able to distinguish between what should be still and what's moving. There are more complicated ways of working with those types of shots, but for the sake of this video and keeping it simple, try to find a clip that doesn't have a lot going on in it. You might be surprised if you use a clip that has more going on than this. It could still work, but set yourself up for success if this is your first time. Try and find a clip that just isn't that busy and has lots of flat planes like this. So what we need to do is apply the 3D camera tracker effect to the video clip and it's immediately going to start analyzing in the background. If we take a look at the effect over here, you'll see what frame it's on, how far through it's actually analyzed the clip. And this is going to analyze as much as the clip as is visible in the comp. So if this is a three minute clip, you might wanna trim it down to just the part that you wanna use so that it doesn't have to analyze the entire thing. But as you can see, it is going pretty quickly. This can be slower depending on what machine you're using, how powerful your computer is, but overall it is a pretty quick process. This clip is fairly long. Let me reset the uh, time code so I can actually tell a little bit easier. Go to the composition settings and make sure the start time code is just set to zero. And this is about a 15 second clip. So not incredibly long, just about 464 frames, but right here we're almost at the end. There we go, it's tracked, it solves the camera, and it may or may not work. So this is the part where After Effects is taking all of that track data and translating it to what it thinks is an accurate representation of the 3D spatial properties of that clip. Now it did not fail. If it had failed, there'd be a red banner there where it said it was solving, and it would say analysis failed. If that happens to you, go into the advanced menu right here and check on detailed analysis, and that may work for you. But sometimes it just will fail. There are certain clips that the After Effects just can't track well. Maybe there's not enough contrast or tracking points. Like I said, things moving around in the scene that's making it too complicated and confusing After Effects. But in this case, at the default settings, it was able to track it and do a pretty good job. Now, if you're seeing drifting, you could always check that detailed analysis on and see if it does a better job, but I think it's gonna work out just fine. Let's talk about what we're seeing here in the comp viewer though. All these little X's that are all nice and colorful, these are all the tracking points that After Effects was able to latch onto and analyze across time. Maybe not the entire clip, but at least for enough time to be able to say, okay, I'm kind of guessing where this is in this space relative to where the camera was when it was filming. And all of these tracking points are positional data within this footage that we can grab onto and use as a point of reference for putting graphics into the shot. Now, as I hover over this, you're seeing this red target showing up over top. And what exactly is this target? Well, imagine 
I have one right here, that it's a flat piece of paper. I printed this out. This is exactly the same as what we're seeing in the comp viewer. And I just wanna have this as an illustration because the orientation of this is letting you know what the orientation is here in After Effects. So this ground, the flat plane of the beach, if I selected a bunch of these tracking points, it's going to attempt to align that target marker to that plane. So if it's showing up and it's looking like this, when it should be flat on that beach there, then you know something's not right and the track didn't go well. But as far as this shot goes, like I said, almost everything is completely flat. So that's gonna be a pretty good representation of what it's actually supposed to look like. And I can scrub through this timeline here and you'll see there are lots and lots of tracking points, much more in the waves over here because there's much more contrast. It was able to grab onto the data a little bit more clearly, but because the sand isn't moving like the waves are, I'm gonna probably base my tracking data off of those tracking points because I know those were fixed in place, they weren't moving around, so we'll get a better result using those tracking points. The next step of this process is to set your ground plane and origin, and this is actually pretty important. Now, when I have trackers selected here, this red target is representing both the ground plane and the origin. Now, what are those two things? Well, the ground plane is just like it sounds, the plane that you're setting as the ground. Now, this could be a wall, say you're tracking a skyscraper or a building and you want the side of the wall to have graphics on it, you could tell After Effects, that's actually my ground plane. But in this case, the beach is the ground. That's what I'm gonna use as my ground plane. And the origin is the center point of your 3D scene when you generate a 3D camera and add graphics into the scene. Just like the origin of a 2D comp is the top left corner, zero on the X, zero on the Y. If you add in a third dimension, then it's gonna have zero on the Z as well. That will be your origin. Using this target as the origin is going to tell the 3D scene that zero comma zero comma zero on the position should start right where that target is. So let's Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna select a bunch of these points just by clicking and dragging a lasso around them and then right click right in the middle of the target. You see how my mouse changed its cursor? If I right click, I can say set ground plane and origin and now everything is normalized to that ground plane. Now if you wanna go even deeper and make this even more accurate and easier to work with, click on the card above to watch a video over at Red Giant on the process for normalizing a 3D track scene. It's super helpful, but it's not always necessary. So I'm gonna skip that for this video. But with that ground plane and origin set, I can choose any one of these points and it's going to be now relative to where I set that ground plane and origin. So let's say that I wanna put a text layer right about here. I'm just gonna grab a bunch of these points, right click and then say create text and a camera. That's gonna make a 3D camera that follows all of the movement of the camera that actually shot the footage. If I press U, the position and orientation, it has keyframes for every single frame of this comp. And because we oriented everything around that ground plane target, now I can add any kind of graphics into my scene and this will be the origin, the center point of where those graphics show up. So I have a 3D text layer. It's aligned to that ground plane, which is why it looks like it's laying on the ground, but I can click and drag on the X axis rotation or orientation and hold shift to snap that up to 90 degrees. And now it's gonna be standing up. Now I wanna make that maybe just pure white so it's nice and easy to see, but watch what happens as I scrub through this text right here in the timeline, it's going to appear as if it was in the shot. That was super easy to do. I didn't have to do any special keyframing or any kind of crazy setup. It's just apply the 3D camera tracker, generate some text, and there we go. It looks like it's in the shot. Now we can make this look even a little more accurate if we turn on motion blur for that layer, but I do wanna kind of match it to the motion blur of the original camera. And I think this blur is a little extreme. So I'm gonna go to the composition settings over to the advanced tab, and then change my shutter angle down to say 90. So 180 is kind of the default, but on a drone, it's probably gonna be much lower, especially out in broad daylight. So it's not gonna have nearly as much motion blur, not as much smearing around. So I think that looks a little bit better, but now that we have this data all baked into our clip, basically into our comp, I can select the 3D camera tracker and grab any number of clips, right click, say create text, and I instantly have another text layer aligned to that ground plane. So I can just reorient this by grabbing these gizmos for the orientation, and they're all going to appear as if they were actually in the shot. So you can really go to town now, just having a lot of fun adding in things to whatever scenes that you want. It doesn't have to be text. You could also generate solids, or you don't even have to generate things based on this tracking data. Now that I have a couple things in the scene already, why don't I put something else in the shot that's not text? 
Something like, I don't know, maybe a dancing fox. I'll just make that 3D. It's gonna snap to that origin of zero comma zero comma zero that we set with the ground plane and origin. But I could grab say the position and even the orientation of this text, copy and paste it onto that and then reposition it however I need to. So let's drag it up so that the feet are actually on the ground aligned with that text. And then I could, you know, push it further back in space. And then I could say something like dancing and then on the second layer, fox, and then it's gonna fly through, dancing, fox, and he's going off screen a little bit, so why don't we move him over here so that he's front and center, maybe pull him closer to camera. It's gonna fly right by that, and then eventually the camera does turn over here, so why don't we just duplicate this clip move it into the back and let's actually grab some position data from the 3D camera tracker just so it's easier. I wanna put them right about there. So I'll generate this time just a null object since I don't want it to render. And then I'll copy the position and orientation of that layer to that copy of the fox, just reorient it maybe scale it up a bit, press A to bring up the anchor point and just change that so that the feet match right where that point is on the position axis. And that way, as the camera turns, it's turning towards the fox. Maybe I wanna move it just a little bit closer to the camera. And now the camera should turn towards that clip before it ends. And the last frame is blank. I'm just gonna trim this by a couple of frames, make sure that I have my whole work area set. Trim comp to work area. The last thing I wanna do is have these loop. And actually there's a long stretch of beach without the fox. So why don't we add a couple more in? That first one is fine, but let me go into the footage, right click on it, say interpret, go to main, and then change the loop all the way down to the bottom to 99. So it just loops a whole lot of times. And then I can extend these out as much as I want. So Let's bring this first one actually back to the start. That way we can see it from the beginning. It doesn't just appear. And then why don't we make some duplicates of this and rotate it a little bit so that it's facing the camera, bring it closer to the camera. And then we can just have a whole bunch of dancing foxes. So we'll add one here, one there, push one further back a little bit. Maybe this one can be over here in the water. And then to just take them out of sync a little bit, I'm just gonna randomly offset them making sure that they actually fill up the whole comp. But now we should have a whole bunch of dancing foxes. Let's play this back and see what it looks like. All right, dancing, fox, dancing foxes. This is super weird, <laughs> but man, it was easy to do. And that's what I love about 3D camera tracking. You can very quickly and easily put whatever you want into footage, especially when you're working with nice steady shot footage like this with not a lot going on in the frame with all of these flat planes. It's just super simple and easy to do and it can really add a lot of life to whatever you're creating. So get out there, start tracking stuff into footage and have fun. Let me know if you have any questions about this process. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. And if you share something that you created using this technique, tag me at Jake in Motion on Instagram or Twitter or leave a link down in the comments so that I can see it. Thank you so much for watching this video. A huge thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon for your continued support in making videos like this one. Thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video and I'll see you in the next one. Ed, 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 Ed,